I just think the black might be too harsh, but I love black. Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel. I am the designer of wearable granny square garments and I'm also the author of the HDDC handbook, taking you from hobbyist to crochet designer. Now, it's been a hot minute since I spoke to you so I got all the things to share. And on top of that, I have just had two chocolate bars and a packet of strawberry laces and the sugar is kicking in hard right now. So, hold on to your seat. I hope that you've got some crochet and you are ready to see all the things I've been working on and hear all of my updates because I've got so much to share. Um, if you are brand new hi hello and welcome to the tribe it's lovely to have you here you will hear lots of crochet goodness um pretty much everything i'm about to show you is the granny square um and if you're a returning viewer hey tribe what's good what's happening thank you for sticking around i hope that you are all tickety boo right where shall we start um i did write some notes but I already know that I'm gonna be going down some side tracks, so let's get started. Um, first of all, what am I wearing? <laughs> I almost went and told you something else first. What am I wearing? So, I am wearing something I finished this morning, and it is a chunky version of my revival pattern. I have held two strands of double knit together and I've basically used the revival pattern with some modifications. So I have made this following the revival pattern, which I've got here. And that calls for a single strand of double knit yarn. And what I did for this version is I held two strands of double knit together, which makes it chunky or bulky, whichever term you use um and i'm really 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 happy with the effect of it i chose to um make it really quite oversized i wanted something that i could put on with leggings and my docks and just be really comfy and cozy like this is <laughs> this is something i could wear to the shop because like that's our only outing at the moment um though we are hopefully coming out of lockdown in the uk so hold in there hold it down um it's something that you can just put leggings and docks on and just go about and do whatever it is you need to do run your errands um and i just think it's really really cute i also love that it's predominantly black so the sleeves and the joining and the rib the neckline is all black but the granny squares i chose to hold one strand of the color and one strand of the black now I wanted to do this because when I made my example jumper, which I'll grab for you in a minute, I held a strand of black with scraps of yarn and I was really intrigued what it would look like in a granny square format. So of course I had to try it. And this is a pattern, um, a project that I started um, maybe early January, January, when I started to feel more myself, started to feel a bit better um and of course it had to be granny squares so i made these chunky granny squares and just knew that i had to make a chunky version of revival um and it is gorgeous it's really warm it's really snuggly i am really pleased with it and i'd like to make another one i really like this effect of holding the color and the black double um, and you could do whatever colours you wanted and you could you could even hold a colour and um, a double knit throughout this. I'm just checking I didn't have it on inside out, but I don't. Um, so you could use scraps, you could, honestly, the possibilities are absolutely endless. For me, 
I wear predominantly black. I usually wear head to toe black, especially in the winter. It's just what I like to wear. And so I was finding that I wasn't really reaching for my other makes because they were just a bit too out there. Whereas because this is, the colors are toned down by holding it with the black. Um, and because I'm the majority of it is black, I have found myself reaching for it. And now the ends are woven in, can't see me taking this off to be honest um it is uh, it's just so fluffy and warm um and i've got no i know some people feel a little bit self-conscious wearing granny squares in public because they feel like people are looking or they're not quite as modern but doing it like this i just feel like i'm wearing a snuggly jumper um i absolutely love it so what i'm gonna do is because I made modifications to another one which is here it's the second version I made of Revival I did um, joined this in entirely in pink this is actually the brand colours of HDDC and I love it but I can see me wearing it when it gets a bit more sunnier and brighter I feel like I need a tan um, and I did a crew neck rather than the cow neck that the original has so this is the original and it has a cow neck which makes it super warm and snuggly for winter. Uh, and I had a few people message saying they weren't so keen on the crew neck, um, cow neck, and could they modify it? So I know you can modify it, but I wanted to try it myself. So I came up with this. And I know a lot of people really want to make this version. Um, and so, and also there's a few people that have run out of yarn so if they didn't need to make the cow, then they would have enough to finish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my instructions for the pink crew neck version and for this version. Um, I also wanted to show what it was like to have the block granny squares as opposed to the different colour rounds. Because I know for some people that ends were massively putting people off. So that might be another option. Um, I'm going to write it all up into a couple of sheets of A4 paper. Um, and I'm going to insert them in the original pattern so that whoever purchases it from now on will get both as a download. However, if you've already purchased this pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the instructions for this and for the crew neck available as a free download. Now, you are going to need this pattern to understand what I'm talking about in these two. Um, but the reason it's going to be a free download is because I'm not going to have this version or the crew neck tech edited or tested. It is just um, more instructions of how to modify this to get as many different ways and wears out of it as possible. If I had this tech edited, because of the cost, I would then charge um, for this pattern as a standalone pattern. Maybe in the future, I might um, release patterns in different weights separately. But for now, because it's literally just try this, this is what worked for me, I'm gonna release it as a free download. So as soon as that's available, I'll post about it on my Instagram and then it will be available forevermore on my um, website as a free download so that you can make a chunky version and a crew neck version. Um, I made this one into a crew neck, but I could also make it into a cowl if I wanted to. Um, I think I really want to make another one, like really want to make another one. But I do have a lot of other things to make. So that's what I'm wearing. It's one of two of my finished objects and kind of a whip because I need to write the pattern up for you. Um, but because I enjoyed this so much, and let me get example before I forget. So this is example, another finished object, um, which you would have seen me wearing before. I held a strand of four ply black yarn with DK scraps and it's got these black contrasting seams which are just chef's kiss, <laughs> amazing. Um, because I've really enjoyed this scrap effect and because I'm trying really hard not to purchase more yarn at the moment. Um, I'm trying to use up what I've got and you can see behind me although I have a fair bit 
started another scrap granny project and that is here so I have made a stack of these um, they're three rounds yellow pink and grey but they're going to be joined in the black like this because I just love having the, the main colour black I have always been hesitant because I know it's hard work to work with and I thought it might be really difficult to photograph I've just photographed this one and I had no problems at all. I use this wall behind me as a backdrop. Um, the only thing I am going to say is I made this harder for myself because when I was working on this one, I wove all of the ends in and then I tried it on and realised that I'd made, I wanted to change something. And when you've woven the ends in on black, it is so difficult. So I had to basically just cut chunks of it out. Had I not woven my ends in and tried to be one of them Miss Do-Gooders and Overachiever, it would have been so simple. So I've got a stack of these. I am carrying a basket around at the moment as I wander around the house so that I can work in my different spots. So right now I'm in my yarn room, HDCHQ. I also do quite a lot of crochet on the sofa and I also do a hell of a lot of crochet in bed. Um, so this basket though not pretty it's just really easy to carry around um and i've got this huge stack of them Ugh. of those and then i've made some more which are yet to have the gray on them now i did grade this pattern because it's going to be a cardigan However, I don't have enough of the yarn to make enough squares to make the cardigan. That's all of the yellow that I've got left. Um, and I wanted, I don't want to change the colours. So what I'm going to do is add on maybe one or two more rounds of black to these, this square. Regrade it and see how many squares I need and see if I've got enough with what I've already done or partially done. Um, but I'm okay with that because I like how the majority of this is black so I know that I'll get a lot of wear out of the cardigan with there being more black in there and you can pick whatever colour you like um, just my favourite colour is black closely followed by pink um, and yellow I love yellow too so I'm making more of an effort to make items that I am going to wear a lot more of um, I've worn my first revival to death I really have it's really bobbly but it isn't my go-to color this is my go-to color so I would like to make another um, of my original revival pattern another version of my original revival pattern in black I just can't decide on the granny square color at the moment I might just go like really bright pink I'm loving neon at the moment I'm loving that zingy pop um, I want to call a pattern zingy and I've already started a pattern called pop and my pony my puppy who whose name is Albie but we call him pony as well I got him a neon harness to match the neon lead and he's now got a neon um, coat because he feels the cold quite easily so um, yeah I'm loving the neon at the moment so I'm thinking of doing black and neon I don't know I'll let you know what I, how I get on with that if it happens um so yeah really really liking the black um another whip that I've got going on and I realize I've just left another one over there is this one lots of black again this is called big it is chunky yarn or bulky yarn though I've actually held two strands of double knit together again um, and I simply made four granny squares for my size well actually all of them are going to be granny squares I'll come back to that four granny squares um, and then I've done this raglan effect on the sleeves and the way I've done that is it's actually I did a half a granny square so a triangle and then I did another one entirely in black here and then I've added the sleeves on um, the only thing I'm a little bit annoyed about is the black that I did the half granny square is different yarn to the sleeves and I want it to have a seamless look but because the yarns different you can see the color difference 
Eh, maybe you can't, but I can. So that annoyed me a little bit. But this is big. Um, I just need to finish the sleeves. It's actually in time out at the moment because I graded the sleeve wrong and I'm not I'm not happy with the shape. So I've regraded it. This needs to be ripped off, which would be the third time. Second time of ripping it off, third time of restarting the sleeves. So once the sleeves are on, I can get that photographed and then written up um, so it can go and be tech edited. I just wanted, um, well it wasn't, what I was asked by Sarah, one of my tribe stars, um, if I was I could maybe do big granny squares, like chunky granny squares, so there's less ends or just so it takes less time. I was like, yeah, I can do big. So that's where this came from. And I really wanted to do the raglan idea that I had from when I, a while back, I was working on a pattern called Victory, which is still in the works. And I wasn't sure whether to do entirely plain sleeves, but when I joined the mom, because it was drop shoulder, it didn't look right. And so then I got the idea to do the half granny squares to make it merge really nicely. So um, all of the yarn in this was actually gifted to me by my friend who sent me a load of yarn that she's not gonna use. And I now think I'm gonna remake one um, mainly in pink like joined in black with pink in the centre because I'm nothing but predictable um, but first this one needs finishing um, and as I was saying each size is going to be the four granny squares but what I'm going to do is as they go up in size the more rounds you need per granny square um, and basically the reason for doing that is because they are squares so it's a modular design it's not as simple to grade up um, as it would be if it was like rows of stitches because if you need to add an inch between sizes for example um, you can't just add an inch to a granny square unless you put more rounds on um, if I wanted to make it's really difficult to explain without having it physically in front of you but basically if between the, th the few sizes I needed to add an inch you're not going to make another granny square that's an inch but you could add on another round that, that then adds up to an inch so I think that is the way forward on that one so it isn't going to be perfectly size inclusive um, however it is oversized so there shouldn't be any problem in it fitting anyone it's not form fitting if it was supposed to be quite form fitting then this idea would wouldn't be working so i'm going to finish that up and then that one will be coming to you example that i've just shown you is now with my tech editor so that will be out for testing maybe even next week which is great um and i'm going to write these two up myself so then you'll have that as well and then i've got one more project i'm going to grab one more project I'm going to admit to, and that's this one. Now this is called Renewal. It was named by one of my tribe stars, Cindy, um, and it's a granny square cardigan. I have been repeatedly asked for cardigans, like it's one of my biggest requests. So I started to put this together to make a cardigan. Um, I quickly realised that it didn't have enough granny squares on it, it's too short. I thought I wanted it cropped, but that's too cropped, so like halfway up my back. Um, but I don't have enough of the pink to make more granny squares. So what I'm going to do is take it apart and then use the pink that's here and in the shoulder, shoulder shaping to make the additional granny squares that I need. And then I'm going to rejoin it with this which is like a neutral oatmeal type colour um, just because as much as I love pink I do feel like that is too pink um, and I just think black could be too harsh or would it or would it I don't know maybe I'll do um, each granny square with both colours and then put it up on my Instagram stories to get people to vote because 
I will wear black more than I'll wear this, but then in the summer maybe I'll put this on in the evening. I'm still going to wear black. I'm still going to be wearing my Doc Martens in the summer. Um, so that needs sorting out. I don't want to purchase any more yarn at the moment, um, unless it's specifically for patterns that I'm planning. Spoiler alert, I've got a winter collection that I'm planning and I'm buying all of the yarn for that, but I'm trying to use this up into other patterns rather than add to the stash um, and when I get onto the chatter section at the end I'll let you know just how much yarn I've already donated and given away and yet my tower you can't even see the top of the tower <laughs> so this needs frogging basically um, and then I'm going to have a go at either joining it with this I just think the black might be too harsh but I love black so I'll probably put that on my stories and go around each granny square as a make a sample with each color rather and then get people to vote so that's renewal a granny square cardigan this one doesn't have a name as of yet I'll ask the tribe stars if they've got a name because they're good really good at this um, and then if not I'll put it on Instagram so that's two patterns dedicated to two tribe stars big and renewal to Sarah and Cindy so thank you you two you're the bestest 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 um, and then victory is going to be dedicated to Shardine because she loves that pattern and I'm gonna get it to you don't you worry I'll even show you them to prove that I'm still working on them hold tight Okay, so Victory is another Granny Square project, shock. Um, and you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit here because it is very much at whip status. Here's a random Granny Square that I took out of here. I might make my puppy a matching jumper. Anyway, I have made a skirt of my Granny Squares with an elastic waistband and then I've made a matching top and that set is called Victory. So it's a granny square jumper and a granny square pencil skirt. Um, and then because this is the same colorway as Promise, so it's glitter black, I decided I needed to make another set so that you didn't think it was the same pattern, which it totally isn't because um, the gauge is different, um, and so you need different amounts of squares and if you tried to make promise into a pencil skirt it wouldn't fit you well it would it wouldn't be close fitting though and it'd be a bit more see-through so i decided i was going to make another version in a different color which looking back now i was just overthinking but i started doing it in this denim and black so i've done the top in this color and i've done the skirt in this colorway and the top for this one is in pieces and the skirt for this one is in pieces Blah. um <laughs> so it's entirely granny square including the sleeves um and i actually really like it and i really like working with denim yarn so i want to do more in the denim i would like to try and make a denim jacket um i'm pulling that face because i know i'm not going to get to it until much much later in the year if not this time next year because there's that much on my schedule but anyway so this is victory it will be dedicated to Shardine because I know how much she loves this pattern and for all the support that she has given to me over the last countless years now um I love that pink and then I was going to do so I've done I need to take this waistband off and reattach it and do a tutorial of how I did that um, but then on the blue denim version I'm going to just crochet the waistband so if you don't want to add elastic you don't have to so it's going to be two waistband options um, so that basically just needs finishing up and some tutorials recording and I know the reason I'm holding off from doing it is because of recording the tutorials I need to figure out some sort of overhead stand something to get that done for you so uh, there's a lot of whips on the go um but it's good to see and um, i think that's all of my whips 
that I'm actively working on that I can share right now. Yeah. Um, I've been playing with a few other cardigan ideas, but for now, that is more than enough to be keeping me busy. Um, so that's all of my whips. You've seen all of my finished objects. Um, and I've got some incoming goodies to share with you. And then I've got loads of updates to give. Normally I like to give the updates at the front because I feel like it then makes more sense for the rest of everything else. But I just had to dive in. Just had to dive in. So I've had two incoming goodies. Um, and I did a swap for my patterns for these. So the tag is made by love underscore flags. Um, and you can see it here. You see that? Um, and I got a message, like I'm an influencer. I got a message like, hi, I'd love to send something to you. And I was like, here's my PO box. Cause like, I'm legit now. Um, and as soon as I saw, I was just like, oh, yes, yes, yes. And then I felt like bad accepting items um, because we're all, we've all got bills to pay, you know? So I said, I would love to, do you mind if I send you um, like a granny square pattern um, as like a swap? So that's what we did. And I received two pin badges and I got this one, so it's Made by Love Flags, okay? You are all gonna need this, so make sure you know the name, Made by Love Flags. You find them on Etsy, Facebook, Instagram. Look. Mm, it's a granny square. Oh, I absolutely love it. I love the colors. And it says Granny Square Love across the banner and it's gold enamel. And then this one, which I wasn't expecting at all, and it says Crochet Club, and it's pink. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Made by Love Flags. You all need to go and get your own. They're on Etsy, so you need to go ahead, purchase one, and say Heather sent you. <laughs> um, Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy. I absolutely love them and like I just feel legit now. I had something sent to my PO box. But look at the colours. So I want to get a banner. And I'm not sure, I think I'm gonna put it on this wall here so I can put all my pin badges on because I have them on um one of my project bags at the moment. But I really don't use project bags as often at the moment because I'm not leaving the house. So they're kind of in a basket or just just there's a pile on the floor as well, but we're not going to admit to that. Um, so I would like to have my pin badges on the banner, also because I have lost pin badges before by taking them out of the house. So um, I'd like to take them off my project bag so that my project bag doesn't get wrecked and so I don't lose them. So go and get yourself a granny square. I want to focus on my big head. Come on, I'll put some pictures in anyway. So, thank you, absolutely love it. Now that I've shown you, I can take it off the card and I'm gonna get a pin, a banner from Etsy and put it just here, I think. Um, I'm trying to leave this wall completely blank because it's the wall that I take my pictures against. So, yes, um, and then updates. Whew. Okay, on to my chatter section, which doesn't have a name. I feel like it needs a name. I'll think of one. Um, I've got loads of updates to, to like, just information to give you. Um, so most of you will have watched my previous vlog. If not, it's linked above somewhere, um, where I told you three huge life updates. Number one, I moved in with my partner and I'm now in our new home. I have officially given the keys back to my previous house. So this is it now, this is home. Um, it took some adjusting, like moving everything, um, getting used to living with someone else, even though we saw each other three or four nights a week. Um, it's different when you live with each other 24 seven. And then the second update was that we got a puppy. 
So Brad got me a puppy for my Christmas present. There's like couple goals or something. It's so cute. Um, so we picked him up early January. His name is Albie. I'll put some footage in of him for you. And he is a Greyhound cross Saluki. He is growing so, so fast. Um, and one of my friends said that he must be part pony. And now his nickname is Pony. Um, he actually responds to it as well. He is a beautiful red colour. Mm, I absolutely love him. I can't stop grinning and it's making my face ache. <laughs> um, oh, I absolutely love him. His red colour matches Brad's beard, so that's beyond cute. Um, we called him Albie because I have um, a very fond memories of the Harry Potter series and Albus Dumbledore is one of my favourite characters. Um, close second would be Hermione and I wanted to call him Albus however all of our dogs from, my, from when I was growing up with my mum have ended in a Y or an E. So we've had like Sunny and we've had Harvey and we've had Darcy and Barney and Marley and on and on and on and on and on. Um, and so I wanted that IE or the Y. So we went with Albie, A-L-B-I-E. Um, but I do call him Albus, which he also responds to. So he's Albs, Albie, Albus, Pony, Oi, <laughs> you, no. He responds to all of those, um, varying degrees of success. He is adorable he is funny he thinks he's funny i don't always find him funny but he definitely tries um he's learning really really fast he's picked up so many commands he's now three months old just over three months old um i think he's at like 13 or 14 weeks he's massive like massive um and he's only going to get bigger because he's going to keep shooting up until he gets to about nine months old um and Albie is actually at daycare today for his first time ever so there's that um long story short the last four weeks of him being home he couldn't go for a walk because he needed to wait for his injections um and the last week before he was able to go out oh he had so much energy and the garden just wasn't enough no matter how many times i threw his ball he just had so much energy and um <laughs> yeah that weekend i was just like oh my gosh and then the next day we we're able to take him out for a walk and he's like he's a new dog like having that outlet for his energy is ugh, it's made such a difference and now um he goes for his walk and then he sleeps for like three hours and he eats and then i either take him for another one or we chill in the garden and then in the afternoon He's kind of like sleepy chilled and he just wants to be around so I can do a lot of work downstairs. However, everything for for HGDC is set up up here. And so, um, and this is basically going into the third update. My other huge update is that I am now a full-time HGDC. I'm a full-time crochet designer. I'm living my dream and I love it. Um, so within like the space of a couple of weeks uh, i moved in with brad i got a puppy and i changed career so like my entire life changed um and it's been amazing it's a roller coaster even when it's good change it still can take some getting used to and adjusting um so i've done all of this change all at once and i'm glad to say that like things things are good um but one of the things I was finding was that YouTube was being um, neglected almost because I was really struggling to get the time to record. So um, because Albie is still a baby, he will jump up at me, he'll make me muddy. Um, so some mornings I would like get myself ready and try and record and then I'd put him to bed and then he'd hear me yabbering on up here. And so he would like, start calling to me and singing and making noises so that I went back down um <laughs> and I, that's not good because you don't want to hear his whale song in the background um and then if I went down like dressed like this he might jump up at me so then I'd be filthy or he'd snag something 
Um, so then I'd be trying to wait for him to fall back to sleep and just, yeah. Some days he would sleep for three hours um, and other days he'd sleep for like half an hour and he'd be like, I'm up, let's go do something. Um, and I didn't want him to be, I didn't, I, yeah, it was just, it wasn't quite working. So we went and looked at daycare for him um, and we went and looked at a place and I was really, really happy with it. Um, we actually viewed it on Saturday and it's all licensed um everything he's fully secure safe he's going to be with other dogs so he's going to get all of his puppy socialization um he's going to be interacting with other humans which is great and also i don't want him to be too anxious about me not being around all the time because it is locked down because i'm home 24 7 he is with me 24 7 and that's not good for his confidence um and the place that we've picked also does boarding. They have a kennel set up, um, kenneling. And so when, when we can go away again, we can put him into kennels there knowing that he's gonna be okay because he knows the staff, he's used to daycare. And so it'll be like less of a stress. Um, Cause for anyone that's like an OG viewer, I had Darcy before Albie and Darcy was part of my mum's pack because he was he grew up in that house when I was younger I got him when I was 18 years old and when I moved out when I was like 24 or something was I 24 or was I older whenever it was say 24 um he could still go back into my mum's house she has four dogs of her own and her boys would accept him because he grew up there so then when I went away he could go there but for Albie, Albie's not growing up in that house. He doesn't spend any time there because it's locked down. Um, and so I needed somewhere that he could go um, in the future. Even just if I am struggling with my health or something, at least I know he, could, he can go into daycare or um, if I'm in hospital, he can go into kennels and he's gonna be okay. So I'm excited about that. And I really hope that today he gets on really well because for me, this is going to be a lifelong thing for him. So Thursdays is the day that Albie goes to daycare. And so I can get all of my recording done for YouTube um, and take a load of pictures for Instagram so that I can have all of that running in the background and I can get these videos up and scheduled for you. Otherwise, it's just going to be... It really annoys me. Like, I'm in the flow and you get videos every week and then it stops and I just want it to continue. So um, he's going to daycare just so that I can, I just thought I heard him cry then. Keep thinking I can hear him crying and he's not even here. Um, <laughs> I've got the day so I can record and get things done um, without having to worry about him or get frustrated because he <laughs> wants to play and I need him to sleep or um, <laughs> so you can't hear him in the background. Um, other updates for HDDC is I have opened a second account which is called the HDDC underscore hub and the reason I've done that is because I have written um oh I'm so proud of this so I have written this I'm going to show you it and tell you about it it's called how to size grade a crochet pattern now anyone that's been here for quite some time thank you um i started this channel just to show what i was working on and then as i started to make designs more and more of you are asking for them to be released which is where revival came from um and soon after i released that i realized that i could make this my full-time gig which i'm now doing so i've released three patterns and here i am which is just amazing just gonna caveat that with a lot of work went into this over the years to get to that point not an overnight success but I hope that I do inspire some of you um yeah so I then started to get requests on how do you size grade now size grading is where you take the pattern from one size and then you make it so that it goes from extra small to five extra large or even bigger um, even smaller, even bigger, whatever size you need. And I was asked how I learned to do that. And could I teach people? 
I taught myself how to do that and it took quite a while because I was trying to use a lot of free resources, I was trying to figure things out myself um, and it was a lot to learn all in one go, it really was. And I know had I've had access to this workbook, I'd have done it a lot, lot sooner. And so I would have been full-time HTDC a whole lot sooner. Now, everything happens for a reason. And the reason I went through that is so that I could teach you how to do it. So I came up with the idea that I wanted to make a handbook for other crochet desi designers, new or aspiring. Um, and there's actually that much information in it that I've turned it into four workbooks. So the handbook is now a four part series. Part one is workbook one, how to do your size grading. Part two is all about the pattern launch and I've written 80% of that. I'm gonna finish that up today and tomorrow so that it can be sent to my tech editor sometime next week. Um, and then part three is your business foundations and part four is your business growth. Um, and I've got them all planned out and then I'm going to go on and write those. So I decided when I went full time that now that I have the additional time, I can actually run the two accounts. Um, the reason I've chose to do that is because on HDDC, you are all here for my patterns, which I love. Thank you so, so much for sharing, buying and making my patterns. It means the world and because of you, I get to live my dream. So thank you so, so much. Plus the granny squares like having a comeback right now. And I love that. Um, <laughs> which is good because all of this is granny squares. Oh, I dropped one. Um, and I decided that I wanted to separate out the handbook side of things because what I'm going to be posting in that account is for a slightly different audience. Now you can be both, you can be tribe and here for the patterns and you can be a creator and want to learn to make your own patterns, but you're going to find both in two separate places. So um, you can follow me on the HDDC Instagram and you can follow me on the Hub Instagram page. And the Hub is for everything handbook related and I'm actually about to start a second YouTube channel for that as well. Um, so as soon as I've posted, you'll find all the details on the Instagram accounts. Um, because I really, really enjoyed doing the Boss Talks um, November, December on the HDDC channel, this channel, to the point where I want to bring more business related content. Um, and so I've decided to separate that out into a second channel. Um, so, here on HDDC, every month you will see my month in review, like this one, I've done February in review. You'll see that every month and that will be where you see what I'm working on, so my whips, my patterns, finished objects, I hope there's more of those, um, incoming goodies and all that sort of stuff. I'm also going to do a um, second vlog, so you get the review at the end of the month, hopefully the last week of the month, and then... Um, the review, I've just said that, and then the second one, mid-month, is going to be a hangout, which is, um, I did it for Christmas, where I recorded the footage of me working on a project, and I put really nice music to it, so we can just hang out together whilst uh, we work on projects. So there should be at least two videos a month on HDDC, and then on the hub, I'm going to have everything related to the handbook. Um, so that's going to be everything that is needed for crochet designers. Um, I'm gonna have everything about the workbooks and the handbook. I'm gonna have tips and um, information for crochet designers. I'm gonna put um, my sale reports up there. So sales that I made on Revival, my first three patterns. Um, I want to do a giveaway on there as well. And I'll share more of that on the actual channel. Um, and yeah just more business related. So you come here and you enjoy crochet and projects that you can work on and then you go to the hub and it's how to turn your crochet into an income stream. So I'm really excited to do all of that. This vlog is now getting on quite a little bit. So <laughs> I'm going to um, say bye to you for now. Make sure you go follow my Instagram pages so that you get the updates. Um, that is pretty much the only places that I post now. 
Facebook now and then. I'm trying to be more consistent on there too. Um, and then you will see all of the updates. If you want more regular vlogs on the crochet side of things, so the HDDC, then I encourage you to sign up to be a tribe star on Patreon. We have a really cool gang of tribe stars on there and um, every Friday I post a inside HDDC. So I just do a 10 minute mini vlog on what I've been working on that week, which is where you can see how my whips are progressing, how my patterns are progressing. Every month that I have a pattern that's released, tribe stars get one for free. Um, as long as you're a six round or a 10 round granny square sign up and all the details are below, um, which means I get an example in a couple of weeks time. Can't wait to see what you all make. Um, and we also do Zoom chats. I'm holding two in March, one for all the tribe stars and the other one specifically for the higher tier. Um, just because I really miss crochet talk at the moment. So I want to say a huge, huge thank you to my Tribe Stars for always being there, encouraging me, supporting me and really helping me when my health was really struggling. Um, I can't thank you enough for just being here. Um, so Tribe, thank you so, so much. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I will see you again for more soon. Bye.